So if you're like me, you know a lot of people who are constantly going into Facebook jail, getting knocked off of social media, you name it. Unlike me, you probably don't know a lot of people who legally sell firearms and have to deal with the ranging compliance issues as far as here's the rules on paper versus here's how it goes down in the Facebook street. Well, last time he was here, Chris Maves, founder and owner of Select Fire Weaponry, check him out in the description box below, especially if you're looking to buy, sell estates, class three, all that kind of good stuff. He was telling me story after story after story of just Facebook jail, probably like hard prison time. And I had figured, wouldn't it be a good idea just to sit down and just talk to him about what's it like being a firearm dealer in today's day and age, whether it's dealing with social media, online, you name it. Somehow or another, he came back in. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Chris, the people have spoken. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me again. So you and I got into a conversation when we were filming the other video about your Kyber Pass Legend rifle. Yep. You were regaling me with tales of you going in different levels of jail and prison and probation on like every single kind of social media you can imagine. Yep. As being a, uh, I, I love that just the deadpan. Yep. Yep. As being a, a firearms dealer and and a nationally like known one too not just like your mom and pop brick and mortar store at the corner but but something that goes well beyond that right just social media zapping you left right and sideways and i wanted to ask you just what's it like what happens i'm sure a lot of our audience can probably relate about being zapped by social media i mean i don't know if you've got like prison tattoos from facebook jail we do we all have matching prison tats now so <laughs> That makes sense. Maybe made with like a, like a blue like ink pen. You like tapped it out or something. Yeah, yeah. Most of them are like Mark Zuckerberg's face right on there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> our Lord and Savior, King Overlord. You know, that's that's definitely a new definition of getting zucked. So yeah, that's for mm -hmm. sure. To have the uh, the zuck stamp. So we'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Go Dark Assets. Now this is something that a lot of you probably don't know much, if anything, about. As an ex-state prosecutor, criminal defense attorney, I can assure you most police departments are using this when it comes to capturing, seizing evidence, and preserving that evidence. We're talking things like cell phones, laptops, and so forth, because what we're talking about fundamentally are little bags that you can put cell phones, laptops, and other electronic devices into to compare completely block EMF signals between the 200 megahertz and 400 gigahertz range, which basically includes 4G, 5G, GPS, and Wi-Fi. What a lot of you may not know is that when you turn off your cell phone or your devices, they really are not necessarily turned off. Case in point, turn off your iPhone if you have one, and then go to the app, find my iPhone. How do you think that's working? Well, for those people who maybe are privacy conscious, the anti-tracking GoDark RF shielding material in these GoDark bags, also known as Faraday bags, effectively blocks signals and secures your digital devices from data theft, unauthorized access, and location tracking. Now, each of GoDark's bags use two layers of GoDark RF shielding fabric that have passed the MIL standard testing as well as standardized military testing for the EMP shielding effectiveness of small portable containers. Now, if you are privacy conscious, you wanna make sure that you're buying from a reputable brand. And GoDark Assets spends a fair amount of money to make sure that their products undergo rigorous third-party lab tests, including RF shielding tests, durability tests, water ingress tests, and even chemical tests to make sure that you're getting among the very best products out there. If you are interested in this, you of course want to make sure that you're buying from among the best. So in addition to those third-party tests, take a look at some of the third parties who they count among their customers. We're talking about the U.S. Department of Defense, the FBI, Department of Homeland Security, and the State Department, among many other federal agencies who do trust Go Dark Faraday bags for their excellent shielding performance as well as superior build quality. So why do these department and government agencies trust them and not one of the many competitors out there? It has to do with how they construct their bags and specifically the RF shielding fabric because that's the most important part of any of these Faraday bags. If the metal lining is somehow compromised, if the cage itself that's blocking the transmissions become compromised with bends, cuts, tears, you name it, you're done. 
And it may be very difficult, if not impossible, to discern with the naked eye what's happening with the liner. In other words, you may think you're safe, and in actuality, you're not safe. Go Dark Assets actually puts in an extra layer, an extra liner to protect the RF shielding fabric itself, thereby making sure that your protection will last a lot longer, keeping you safe and your privacy protected. So if this sort of thing interests you, and maybe it does, be sure to check out links to their website in the description box below. And we're also gonna make sure that it's pinned in the comment field below as well. Thanks very much to Go Dark Assets, today's video sponsor. Now back to the program. What are some crazy things? Just, I mean, let me just throw it out to you. Yeah. What are crazy things you and, and people you know getting getting zucked, getting hit? Well, it's been incredibly frustrating. We had our old account, which we had more than 10,000 followers. We would post on there every single day. New stuff that came in. We always had some kind of witty tags we would write, um, either, you know, making fun of the gun or the people that buy certain types of guns. And, you know, um, we had a great traction. We got great views. Um, we followed Facebook's community standards. We're brick and mortar gun stores are allowed to post and share their products but Facebook apparently can't read their own community standards um, and that page ultimately got nuked um, so we went through a couple different iterations where we tried having a private group um, we tried having backup pages um, and all of them now are just getting flagged left and right by no matter what we post we've tried everything we've tried like just pictures of guns no tags no comments um, and now all of our personal accounts are getting banned for posting it. We always joke, um, we had one of our part-time guys come back um, from college for Christmas break and um, me and Steve were both in Facebook jail and we're like, hey, like, can you do today's post? Cause we can't, we can't post it. So he posted it and he got like a 72 hour ban. So we had to make fun of him like, oh, first time, you know, <laughs> um, welcome in pal, you know. <laughs> Guys, really quickly, if you made it this far in this video, show your support, not only for this channel, but of course the second amendment, easy, free, simple, hit that little like button. It does a lot for us and our channel and the algorithm. It'd be difficult to really overstate it. Also, don't forget to join the discussion going on in the comment field below. What are some of your crazy social media stories? What did you get banned for? What did you go to jail for? Show us your jail tattoos. I'm going to regret that, but let's see what you got down there in the comment field. Look forward to joining that. And of course, back to the program. Okay, so that that's Facebook. Uh, and uh, I, I remember, this is some years ago, I posted something that showed like, gun control and it showed like, you know, Hitler, Stalin, Mao, and how many guns they confiscated and how many people died as a result of their rules and so forth. Um, and that's all it was. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't attached to a candidate, a party. It was just like history of gun control. And it showed like those three people, maybe Ho Chi Minh was involved or Pol Pot. I don't remember there. Maybe there was a fourth and that's, that was my only time. Being yeah. in Facebook jail. So I am not the hardened Chris Maves of Select Fire Weaponry yet that's out there. Um, what's it like getting getting zucked? What can you do and what you cannot do from uh, Facebook jail? Well, you really can't do much of anything. Um, it's And it depends. Every time is different. Sometimes we can't post in groups. Sometimes we can't comment. Um, sometimes we can't do anything at all. Like we just log in there and it tells us like a, like a badge that... You, you have violated community standards, um, which is pretty heavily biased considering some of the other things that are posted on Facebook that they don't seem to care about. But um, guns, they clearly have an issue with and continuously flag us for posting that. So, What, uh, what other platforms have you tried or do you think they're they're better or do you think they're all about the same uh we've dabbled with instagram um and as long as we're not doing anything like promotional selling wise we've had decent luck on there um if we get something cool in or if we do like an event like a machine gun shoot or something we'll post pictures videos of that nature and we haven't had an issue with that we have not tried any other platform at this time we're looking at twitter or x now i guess um but but that's been basically it so far so is there an internship program you guys are running so people like college students can be mules for you to like post Facebook things up? We, we have several people that are outside the shop that were like, hey, can you, uh, you know, we had a power outage the other day. So I had to ask my friend like, hey, can you post that? <laughs> the shop's closed today. Um, so, yeah, we definitely have to get creative as of late. What other areas do you feel like may have changed from, say, 20 years ago? So you know, right now we're talking about social media, right? Mm -hmm. 
are there other areas that you see that are different or uniquely challenging for FFLs? Yeah, there's plenty of things that that other businesses get access to that we don't, like credit card processing, um, advertising, radio ads. There's certain radio stations that won't let us advertise if we use words like machine gun or silencer. Um, so yeah, it's definitely difficult. Like every time we, you know, have to, to tell someone what we do, it's like, you know, like taboo almost like, oh, like they look at us like we're doing something evil and it's like we're following the law. We're more heavily regulated than any other industry. So, um, and we're, we're checked frequently by the ATF to make sure we're doing our due diligence. So it's just frustrating that we're demonized for doing the right thing. How, if you don't mind my asking, and obviously feel free to just pass on this, but that comment has me curious. How often do you get checked by the ATF? Um, we had an inspection um, just this past December. Um, typically speaking, they, they come around anywhere between one in like 10 years from what I've seen. That was our first one in about nine years Okay. since we've had one. Um, we got through it just fine, um, but it was the first one in nine years. I've heard plenty of stories with dealers that will never get checked. Then there's places that um, get checked yearly. And typically right. the yearly places are like the places that have like a lot of traces and guns that end up in crimes and criminal activity and stuff like that. Right. Your Kyber Pass rifle. Probably, I think our Kyber Pass rifle will be will be OK. Probably going to be crime free on that one. Should be crime free. The only crime on that gun is just the building of it itself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 50 state legal. Kids. It is it's 50 antique. state legal. You know, that gun was there when the ATF was doing our last inspection and uh, they 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 confirmed it is not a firearm. So <laughs> out of curiosity, did you get any good comments from the agents? About they, it? they laughed at it. They all thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other antidotes or anything else to share about life as an FFL in the current day and age? Uh, it's it's difficult. Um, online definitely has uh, changed and reshaped the industry um, for sure, as with everything, because you have to be more competitive now. Um, every Everyone's informed. So the days of old gun stores when you walk in and they treat you terrible and have everything were overpriced, like that's not, a th that's not a thing anymore. And if that's how you're operating, well, you're not gonna stay in business very long. I won't name the name, but I did go into a gun store in the greater Milwaukee area. Um, and uh, I, I won't confirm it even if you do drop their name, but uh, they had, and th this was recently, this was within the last several months, they had all sorts of new production firearms listed over MSRP. I, I know exactly who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, we both know who yeah. I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And I I asked the guy. I was the only customer in the shop. There were two or three employees there. And, you know, they ignored me. Yeah, of course. Part of the course, yeah. right? Eventually, one of them kind of shuffled over because uh, I'd been looking for uh, a Colt Python. Maybe this was more than a couple months ago because it was back when uh, those were, those were newish, mm -hmm. right? So the new production Colt Pythons, right? I was curious about them. And... Uh, I forget if I already had the three and I was getting the four or I already had the four and I was getting the three, which way I was going with that. But I was going one way or the other. I already had one. I was looking at the other one. They had it. And uh, so I, right, I just asked the guy, I'm like, hey, you know, what what, what about this? And isn't that over sticker price? Isn't that over MSRP? It's like, well, you know, we all have different distributors and, you know, uh, we deal with a lot of bulk and that kind of stuff. It's like, well, wouldn't that mean you get l better prices it's like well just different distributors like well i just came from a store that had it listed below msrp it's like well they were probably a big store no actually they were like a really small store and uh, yeah i wasn't trying to pick a fight or anything like that but you definitely do see that i'm sure every town yep. has that store let us know in the common field you don't have to out your store but let us know in the common field if if your metropolitan area has that one store that just thinks that you know i know what i've got don't lowball me it's a gen 5 glock 19 all right 900 bucks right yeah serious business they may even let you take home one of the mags that came with it for an extra 15 right that's a deal that's a deal yeah that's a deal well chris we appreciate you coming in again thank you very much yeah thanks for having me Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Of course, if you're interested about Chris May, Select Fire Weaponry, if you're interested in Class 3s, if you're interested in buying or selling collections, estates, you name it, be sure to check them out. They are based here in Wisconsin, but they do work nationally. They are one of the largest volume dealers 
uh, out there in the country, top 100 on GunBroker, and they are surging, I can tell you that as well. So check out Chris May's Select Fire Weaponry. I cannot link to their website, YouTube rules, but I can link to their socials and you can hopefully figure it out from there. So check them out in the description box. We'll hopefully get that pinned comment up as well. And now for our ever popular quote of the day. This one comes from Greek philosopher Socrates. To find yourself, think for yourself. If you haven't already done so, find that like button and then think about what I probably want you to do with that. As always, been a pleasure. I'll see you in the comment field below and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.